You know, sometimes a superstar just has that look in his eye. And this is one of those times that I have to be quick on your feet if you want to be the one with that briefcase when this one's over. Hey, what's up guys? Joker here. Today I'm going to be walking you through how to record, render, and upload 4K 60fps gameplay to YouTube utilizing NVIDIA Shadowplay. And the reason I'm using NVIDIA Shadowplay is because it's the lowest impact performance recording software that I have found, and recording at 4K 60fps is extremely brutal. So know that going into this, if you want to capture 4K 60fps, it's really taxing, okay? So that's why I recommend using Shadowplay because it actually uses a 264 encoder that's built into the modern NVIDIA graphics cards, which usually just sits dormant in there when you're actually playing your games because it's a separate part of the card. And Shadowplay takes advantage of that by encoding in 264 so that it's not actually affecting your gameplay performance as much. I mean, I usually see about a 1 to 2 FPS dip when I'm using Shadowplay, even if that. So it's it's a very, very good software for recording gameplay, and it's, it's really one of the best things I like about uh, having NVIDIA graphics cards. There are other options out there you could use, like Fraps or DxTory, and DxTory is probably one of the most robust recording softwares that you'll find, but it does have a big performance impact when you are recording games, so that's something that you should take, in, take into account here. Uh, but to get started, we've got Shadowplay right here, which you should have as long as you have an NVIDIA graphics card and your latest drivers installed. To get this opened up, just go down to your notifications area here and right click the little NVIDIA eye icon and go to open NVIDIA GeForce Experience and that'll bring us in here. And once you just click Shadow Play, it'll bring up this smaller context menu. So to enable Shadow Play, you just go ahead and click this little light switch like thing and it goes ahead and flips it on. And these are the basic settings that you should have when you're first starting out. And I'm gonna show you the settings that I like to use and I'm gonna explain why I like to use those settings, but you can obviously customize these to the way that you want to use them. For the mode, I prefer to stay on manual. You could use shadow and manual if you want. The way shadow works is it's always constantly recording the previous 5, 10, 15, 20 minutes, whatever you set it to in this option right here, so that it's always capturing that and then writing over it so that if you, you know, have a moment happen in the game, you're like, oh man, I wish I was recording during that. Well, you could just go ahead and hit Alt F10 and then you've captured that previous 5, 10, 15, 20 minutes of footage. This is personally something I don't utilize, so I like to use manual personally. For the quality, by default, they have this just set to high, but I always set it to custom. The reason being is that you can set a higher bit rate, and the resolution you could leave to in-game, or you could set it to 4K, and then you might want to do this because you could actually be playing a game in 1080p or 1440p, and you could be recording in 4K 60fps if you want to, and then upload that to YouTube, and that would offer you the benefits of getting a higher bitrate on YouTube, and even your 1080p footage uploaded in 4K 60fps will look a little bit better, only because of YouTube's crappy impression on the player, not because the gameplay will actually look any better than when you played it, but because of the way YouTube's compression is handled with bit rates and resolution, the gameplay essentially would look better on YouTube's player. But I like to so we're setting this to uh, 4K 60 FPS, so that's what I have it at, at here with the bit rate all the way set to the max at 130. So we're getting the highest quality that we can. For audio, I like to leave this on in game. If you want to set it with a microphone, you can. This is something I don't like to do, and I'll explain why. It's so that in post-production, if, if you're recording and you want to have your audio synced up with the gameplay or something like that, then you're, you know, it's, you're not going to be able to change the levels on one or the other. It's going to be all on one track. So if you raise the volume, it raises the game volume as well as your voice, voice volume. So recording to a separate piece of software like Audacity, which is what I use, it's completely free, I record my microphone to that while I'm recording my video on Shadowplay, and then I just go ahead and sync those up later on in post-production, and it's really easy. It takes like literally two seconds. Okay, so once we're done with these options in here, we do have a few more things that we can configure by clicking the cog wheels right here. By default, your camera should be off, but it should have a status indicator set for the bottom right corner of the screen. You can turn that off if you want to or move it around anywhere. And basically, this is just something that turns on to let you know that you are currently actively recording. Uh, they also have an FPS counter on here, which by default is off. I like to turn this on, though. Even if I'm not recording, I like to have this on because then you're always getting feedback on what your frame rate is in your game. So if you're curious about what your performance is, this is something you could utilize even if you're not actually recording. For your microphone, you could set it to always on or push to talk if you are taking advantage 
of the audio recording options for your microphone. They've also got all the keyboard shortcuts here, so you should familiarize yourself with this. It's Alt F9, though, to start and stop recording in-game, and then Alt F10 is the Shadow Play one. For your recording location, I highly recommend setting this to a separate drive from what you're actually gaming on. For me, I usually game on my G for gaming drive, my SSD, and then I record to my H for HGST, my 4 terabyte mechanical drive. So that's my recommendation is record to a separate drive and don't worry about a mechanical, uh, a mechanical drive not being fast enough to record 4K 60 FPS gameplay. I assure you that it is plenty fast enough to capture 4K 60 FPS footage. All the gameplay I've been capturing like that has been on my mechanical drive. So once we have our gameplay captured, we can go ahead into our editing software, and I'm choosing to use Vegas Pro 13. I was previously running on 12, but I upgraded to 13 because it has all of the encoders that I need for rendering out my 4K 60 FPS gameplay. And you can just take your footage, drag and drop it right into your software right up here, and then you can do your editing magic. Whatever you're going to be doing uh, to edit your gameplay, you know, you could do that. Go ahead and throw it on. As you can see, I recorded some epic gameplay right here of uh, the PC Master Race God and Founder, Gabe Newell, uh, fighting against Spider-Man that I recorded. I was going to maybe do a video with this, but I decided not to, but there it is anyway. we got Gabe Newell being an absolute boss as he likes to be. So before we actually render out our footage, once you are done doing whatever editing you're doing, there's one thing that everyone has to do with gameplay before you do it, and you have to do this. You have to right-click on the video portion of your gameplay, come down to Switches, and disable resampling because what happens is Vegas will interpret if they if maybe your game like missed a frame or skipped a frame or something like that and they'll try to interject their own and what that'll do is it creates pixelated or blocky footage after you've rendered it on YouTube and you might be you might have been scratching your head why do I have my footage looking like this because it didn't look like that when I recorded it it's because you didn't disable resampling make sure you do this for every single individual video clip. If the option is ever grayed out, it means you've accidentally selected an audio clip. So make sure you disable resampling. Okay, so once you're done editing your footage, you can come up to File and go ahead and click Render As, which you are probably familiar with doing if you've ever used Sony Vegas before. And I have a custom profile here for 4K 60 FPS, and it's under the Sony XAVC XAVCS format. I'll show you what it's actually called in here before you actually uh, go in and, and customize it. And it's uh, this one right here. Where's it? 34 by 2160, 59.94 FPS. So this is the one you would basically want to use uh, right here to get your 3840 by 2160 footage. And I usually go into customize template and you can go ahead and rename that if you want to. If you want to just call it like Joker 4K 60 two or whatever uh, you can go ahead and set that and then for the project the last thing I would like to do in here is you go to the video rendering quality and choose best and that is the last thing that I would do in here and then you would click save that and then you've got a custom profile so you've got a custom profile right here which you can go ahead and favorite and you can set this to just show favorites only and then you've got your custom profiles there so you don't have to ever worry about fiddling around with things when I come in here I've got my 1080 one I've got a 4k one I've got 1080p 60 FPS and I've got 4k 60 FPS ready to go so I could just hit my render setting hit render and we're off to the races okay guys so once you're done with that there is one more step to uploading 4k 60 fps footage I never promised that it was going to be easy this is a very time consuming process and it's really going to be up to you at the end of the day if it's worth it to you and if you even have a system that's capable of doing it so there's quite a few steps to all of this but the last one we have to do before we actually upload is go into handbrake which is a free software. Once again, uh, you can just use this to go ahead and convert your final file because YouTube does not like .mxf files, which is what we rendered this in in Sony Vegas. So you can go ahead and just take your .mxf file and just drag it in to Handbrake when you are here and then set the output setting at MP4 and then just make sure everything else is proper. 30, 3840 by 60 FPS. You know, go through here, make sure that your video options is set at like a constant frame rate, the same as your source. For the quality, I put it at right about here. This is what I found to be a pretty reasonable setting. You can put it all the way to max if you want to, but it's probably going to take you like three to four hours to render that out. Using this setting right here at about on a 10 minute video, it takes me like about 10 minutes to actually process this in handbrake. So it's really not that bad. It's nowhere near as bad as the actual render time in Sony Vegas. But what you're done with that, it's converted to MP4 and you're done. All you have to do from there is upload it to YouTube like you would with any other video. But I'm going to highly advise you 
to schedule your upload because it's going to take a quite a long time for YouTube to actually process the 4K 60 FPS side of things. And while it's waiting to process the 4K 60 FPS, it's just going to be hanging on there in 1080p uh, 60 FPS, and it'll actually kind of lock it at that sometimes. So 1080 60 will be the only option for people to watch it under when you upload a 4K 60 video. It's a it's kind of a bug right now with YouTube, but I'm hopefully it'll get fixed at some point. But I recommend scheduling so that when you actually have people watching it, that it's in 4K 60 FPS by the time it reaches them in their subscriber feeds. Because if you're throwing a video out there and you're saying, oh, 4K 60 FPS gameplay, and they open it up, and then they've got they've been welcomed to 360Pville, then no one's going to be happy, and they're just going to leave, and they're like, this isn't 4K 60 FPS, fuck you. And they're going to leave, so... That's all I got to say about that, guys. I'm going to go ahead and get out of here. I really hope that this tutorial, um, you know, was enough to help you guys. If you want to upload 4K 60 FPS gameplay, and if you have PCs capable of doing it, this is really the best way that I've found, um, you know, doing it for, for me, for me anyway. So let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. I'm sure someone will probably have a, a better method that they could tell me and tell me what an idiot I am. But uh, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and get out of here, guys, and I'll catch you next time. Turn.